Do you ever find yourself wondering, when did it get so hard just to figure out tipping? Where should you tip? How much? That's because more places than ever before are asking you to leave a tip. You know those prompts on card payment machines? It's happening at coffee shops, some stores, takeout spots. The gas station, subway, laundromat, everywhere. Places you might never even have thought about tipping before. It's called tip creep. These days I'm like, do I have to give you a $2 tip just for takeout? And there's also tipflation, where those numbers on those prompts are getting higher and higher. We're talking like 18, 20, 30 percent. Putting it on you, the customer, to pick a number or say no, all in front of the person who's serving you. Sometimes I just get like that look from the waiter and it's a little intimidating. It can all be uncomfortable, but do you really have to tip everywhere you go now? And with the cost of living so high, how do you navigate all this? So we could tip 15, 20, 30 percent. The advice from personal finance expert Barry Choi is pretty simple. Do you. But it kind of depends on where you are. Normally I wouldn't tip at a coffee shop, but I do recognize that tip inflation is a thing. I'm going to go with the custom amount. Mm. We had two lattes. I think a dollar is fair. So I just typed in a dollar and we're going to just hit pay. Do you feel guilty when you don't hit one of those amounts? Not necessarily, because when you think about it, the dollar was still about 10 to 12 percent. So we're still tipping, it's just not at 15 percent. Remember the old school tip jar on the counter that maybe you just ignored? Thank you. Barry says to think of digital tip prompts in places like coffee shops the same way, optional. If you didn't pay a tip in the past for these services, don't be afraid to hit the zero and OK. Figure out what number makes sense for you and for the type of service you're getting. Does it make you a bad consumer if you don't tip at all when you go and get a coffee or you go to a bakery? You know, I don't think it makes you a bad consumer if you're in a coffee shop or getting takeout, uh, but some people will probably disagree with me. But when it comes to table service, restaurant dining, where tip prompts are higher than ever, well, that's a lot less optional. 15%, I'm going to say pre-tax, at least that's what my belief is. It really comes down to your budget. Hi, Rubina, can you hear me? Rubina Ahmed Hawk, another personal finance expert, says start thinking even higher. Restaurants and bars, you know, 18% may become the minimum, and then that will just be part of what people budget before they go out. A lot of Canadians are already tipping higher than that. You know the tech company Square? You've probably seen their white card payment machines checking out of places before. Well, it says the average tip on its platform in Canada is now 20%. That's 4% higher than the 16% it was before the pandemic. We became more generous, but that's now crept into some places where it can be annoying. So tipping more and more often can be tough, especially with inflation. But you also need to think about minimum wage because that's what most service workers are paid. And it's just not keeping up with the rising cost of living. Look at Ontario. The general minimum wage is $15.50, but a living wage, what someone would need to actually cover their basic expenses, would be $23.15 for a worker in the greater Toronto area. In British Columbia, the minimum wage is $15.65, but a living wage for a worker in Vancouver would be $24.08. And in Nova Scotia, the minimum wage is $13.60, but a living wage for someone in Halifax would be $23.50. 50, almost $10 higher. Barista Vincent Garcia says tips are huge for workers like him. People who work in the customer service industry are underpaid or paid minimum. So even getting some extra, you know, a few bucks an hour as tips, it makes all the difference. But is there a way around all of this? Some restaurants have totally done away with tipping, paying their employees a living wage instead of minimum and telling customers not to leave a tip. In a recent survey, 59% of Canadians say they prefer that model, even if it means higher menu prices. So we're here at Beast Pizza in Toronto that does just that. Everyone in every position gets paid the same. We do factor that into the costs of what we offer, which doesn't really impact the menu that much. And so what reaction do you see from customers when they come in and see no tipping on your menu? 
I mean, no tipping, no one thinks that's a bad thing, you know. Why should we expect people to pay other people's salary instead of a business? And also working in kitchens for a long time and seeing the inequality of tips with front of house, ethnicity, race, sex, age, all that stuff. I think it does lend itself to definitely more of a teamwork feeling. Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe you could make more money if you were getting tips? You're not going to have a night where you make $400 or $500. You're not going to have those crazy, amazing nights. But you're also never going to have a bad night. I'm very confident that levels out over time. Just knowing with confidence that I can make my rent every month, that's huge for me. But at most places, tipping is still the norm. And tip creep will just keep on creeping. I don't know like which is like which I should tip. There's a minimum, there's a maximum, it's, it's a lot of math involved. Bottom line here, how do people survive tip creep, tip inflation? You know, again, just look at your overall budget and think about where you're spending money. So if you're worried about the tips, maybe dining out, uh, eating out, shopping less is part of your overall budget. If you're comfortable tipping 15%, you should definitely do that. Uh, that said, you know, if you're going out to eat and you can't afford a tip, maybe you gotta rethink about what your goals are. So Ellen, there's a lot of good information in there. I don't wanna ask you for more tips. I'm not gonna do that, but I, <laughs> I do wanna ask for a little bit more advice for people who are watching. Well, one is to carry cash for tips so you don't have to pick a number and play around with the machine. And also remember, those tip prompts, the preset amounts, generally include the tax. So if you pick one, you're tipping on the tax as well. Also, you know, say you go to the coffee shop and you want to leave a tip for that lovely cup of coffee someone made you, but you also buy a bag of coffee beans. Or you go to your hairstylist, you want to tip the stylist, but you also buy the shampoo. Unless those things are run out, wrung out separately, those tip prompts also include those amounts as well. So that's why experts say to pick the custom amount, that way you can ensure you're tipping on just the service and not any extra stuff. I like the cash advice. Ellen Morrow, thank you. You're welcome.